Good morning chaps, welcome to the vlog. So today I think it's going to be part four of the brewery build, brew stand build. Part four of the brew stand build, I think we're on part four. You'll see by the title anyway if I've got it wrong. So uh, this is where we left off before we went across to wire up Tom's control panel which happened yesterday. So what I'm going to do now is remove the pots after we gave them a test fit prior to uh, yesterday's adventures. We're going to bring it in, we're going to continue to finish off all the welds and uh, the plates for the wheels and then we're going to go ahead and add any other components that we need to and the HLT station if you like and then I think we're pretty much approaching the end where we can start to clean up the welds and, uh, and polish the whole thing up. So we'll see if we can get a bit of a shot, folks, of the weld. Oh, sugar. I've not tried this before. So we've got that cheap mask over the camera from Screwfix. And we'll see if we can get, get a shot of the weld. So this technique, I'm just leaving the filler rod in the puddle. I've got it pretty much on maximum foot pedal, which is about 80 amps, because I'm working on the thick plate, and then just wicking across onto the thinner tube section. And the reason I've got the temperature up is because I'm moving quite fast. Right, now the angle of attack for the filler rod is a bit wrong there, so I'm just going to stop and reposition. And now uh, we're flowing again nicely, as I hope I hope you can see. Just little half moon shapes back and forth. The majority of the heat is concentrated on the thickest stock, and then you can just see I'm just wicking up, just wicking up a little bit onto the thinner box section to to flow that that molten puddle and join the two pieces together. Keep getting a little bulbous section on the tip of the filler rod because it's burning back too quick. But I'm just avoiding that hitting the tip of the tungsten. Otherwise it'll flow up the tungsten and contaminate contaminate the tip. Which means I'd have to stop and re-grind. Now we're approaching the end. I'm just going to slow down here. So this is where we're going to change from basically a butt joint to more of a fillet weld as we come around this corner so you'll not be able to see me but so I'll vanish around the corner in a second. So I'm just going to pile plenty of rod in here to make this corner joint, there we go. And then before I run off around the corner, I'm hoping you can still see, I'm going to try and just put this fill it well in the corner here just run this across to meet up I'm doing this round the corner so it's not very easy for me to see I should reposition to be honest but I think I pulled it off and then I've got the final fill it weld which I think is probably off camera now you'll get the idea and we're just about there just got to change the angle of attack of the torch so I don't blow blow the corner of the weld out which causes oxides on the other side of the other side of the steel because there's no shielding gas and there we go. We keep the torch there post flow for uh, until the uh, until the argon stops. And then I'm going to take the hood off. And hopefully we should be able to see the actual world. There it is. In all its glory, yeah, you can see I did come off shot. That was the fillet weld that I was talking about that I had to go around the corner and do. But all of that was pretty much done 
in one hit from where you can see it start there all the way across so I'm pretty pleased with that we are almost fully welded up on the frame folks so I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a close-up of the TIG we've got all these internal welds finished now everything on the corners all nice and tidy the uh, plates for the wheels to go on and now all I have to do is put these center bars in which aren't fixed yet as you can see so one two three four five six and then that is oh no I was gonna say that is the frame complete it isn't we do have the HLT uh, area to put in so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put these frame sections in we'll probably also oh do I want to mount it on wheels beforehand I don't know I'm thinking out loud anyway I'll get these sections put in and then we'll decide on how many uh, bars we're going to run across for the HLT whether it's going to be three or two or four I don't know yet so I've continued with the welding I decided to go for three bars for the HLT to sit on they're now welded in place as you can see there uh, you'll see better obviously when it's the right way up what I'm going to do now is attach the wheels to the bottom of the the stand so my idea is I'm going to tack on these A2 stainless machine bolts and then the whole wheel assembly will just sit down over the top of them like that and we can bolt them on from underneath saving the requirements to drill and bolt through you know the square box tubing so I'm going to go ahead and tack these on next the uh, the day is ticking away because I've obviously gone round and finished off all the welds on the whole thing and uh, well yeah that can, you can imagine has taken me quite some time so I'll give you another quick shot of what's going on once we've got these wheel bolts tacked on so I brought the whole system out here to where we wash things down the drained area and you'll notice that it's uh, it's covered in a slimy paste so this stuff if you're regular to the channel you'll have seen it but if you're not this will be new to you this is Antox 71E plus and it's a chemical that dissolves the uh, discoloration and repassivates the stainless steel so we uh, don't need to wire brush or polish the whole thing up all those dark marks and stains will disappear with this acid you have to be careful with it though it's very dangerous it's very toxic and it needs to be rinsed off with copious copious amounts of water to neutralize it so uh, we'll be giving it a rinse shortly and then if we can as well we'll hit a few bits where it's stubborn with a wire brush but this is just an initial clean down uh, so I can get a good idea and put the wheels on and that kind of stuff of what we need to achieve next um, so 15-20 minutes we'll come back to this clean it up and then stick the wheels on it right then folks we've uh, rinsed off all of the Antox and as you can see we've got one wheel on already and uh, well that's always nice to see that the fit has worked when you uh, Got something on top of uh, let's say welded studs because of course I'd have to go ahead and cut them all off if that didn't work but it did so these wheels are 150 millimeter uh, chemical resistant uh, casters from screw fix they weren't the cheapest wheels that they had but they're all fully swivel and fully lockable and the good thing about these is the width of this uh, it looks like polyurethane to me but the width of this tread so uh, it's easily going to carry the weight of the brew stand when it's full of brew and each caster is rated I think they said to 300 kilograms so 
That's a lot of weight that this blue stamp can carry. I think probably the steel would buckle before the wheels going on that kind of uh, rating that they've got for it. But yeah, let's tighten these nuts up and then I'll just flip the whole unit over. I've got another two casters to put on and then she'll be she'll be ready to roll around. So when I've finished this as well, I can then go ahead and put the, uh, the rollers away because we'll be finished with those, the slip rolls. I'm pointing at the floor a little bit there, aren't I? But there we go. It's looking pretty sharp. Right, I'm going to go and get those other wheels put on. Right folks, you can see there's a little green hole just there. That is because I'm going to install this toggle clamp into, into that hole. And this toggle clamp is what we're going to use to prevent the baskets from rotating and tipping up accidentally. So as you can see, that will go and engage into a hole indexed into the uh, side of the baskets. And then when we want to rotate, we just simply lift that, rotate the basket, and then lock it in again to another hole that should be indexed along the uh, along the circumference, if you will. So there we go. Toggle clamps, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get these installed. completely burnt away my pen mark. Let's do the same here.
quicker than a drill by a long way. Much quicker than a drill. Okay, I might as well explain what's going on here. I cut an end piece for there, as you can see, but I really, really did struggle to do it. I had to go and get some scrap out of the back of the building here. So when I made all the uh, brewery tanks, I had lots of scrap steel, like little off cuts like this. And this was some three millimeter stuff, which I think is the only stuff that's thick enough to act as these half moon retaining cams, if you like. Um, but I had to weld two pieces together and then I've had to cut it with a plasma cutter and it's not come out the shape that I want it to be. So there's kind of pieces missing and yeah, I'm, I'm really not that happy with it to be honest, but it functions. Now the problem is, I'll just zoom in and show you, the problem is I just cut those holes that you saw me cut in the side of these triangular sections here and of course it didn't occur to me that the further down I put the hole the larger the radius of the piece of steel is going to be. I was thinking the further down I put the hole the less pressure is on that cam, you know that lock because if it's further down, it's got a longer lever, if you like, from the, from the pivot to hold the old tank up. So, I failed in that respect, I think, here, because that meant I had to cut a bigger disc than I'd intended to, or semicircle. But we managed to piece a couple together, and I've cleaned this up. You know, it's not come out too bad, has it? You, can, you can't really see. It's not too much of a mess where that weld is. That's what it looked like before. So I'm pretty pleased how that's turned out. The only drawback is now, oh that's hot. Now we've got a really big half circle on the side, which I didn't really want, but it will do the job. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the other side, which will be on the mash tun front. I've also put the uh, front clamps on. I don't know if you can see from across there. But yeah, it's because it's Friday and it is uh, 10 past seven approaching. There you go, if you don't believe me, I'm sure you do. Uh, I'm kind of rushing to get things done now. But yeah, we've got the clamp on, the toggle clamp on, and that's got sufficient space for it to be tightened up if it needs to, or loosened off if it needs to with these threads here. And that is kind of gonna work. But yeah, you see, it's a bit sloppy. I made a bit of a mess with it. Oh, come on. Now the camera doesn't want to play. You see the mess I've made there? So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to tidy this up and make it all look a little bit neater, but I'm sure it will come together as I want it to eventually. It's just not exactly 100% what I envisaged. Because of course the stuff that they've made at this Australian brewery, wherever it is, it's over here. Well, that's a nice, that looks like a nice five, eight mil thick piece of steel. Very well cut and fabricated. Whereas mine now is looking a little bit sloppy, but you know what? It's still gonna work. That's the main thing, right? And I will give it some attention once we've got the main stuff in place. I'll try and tidy it all up, make it look a bit smarter. But it kind of, I think it's going to work. Now that is teamwork. We've both really pushed ourselves today, I think. Jem, bless her, has managed to get all three of these tanks emptied and cast and kegged all on her own while I've been left to my own devices. Look at the colour of that wall. Have you seen this uh, fly killer gem? It casts a really nice UV light against that wall, doesn't it? So, it is getting really late now and I've pressed 
quite hard to get the final few welds done on the table. Five past eight and I've managed to get the half moons on the side and they line up with the holes. This one's just been done, it's red hot. They need cleaning up a little bit and uh, polishing everything else just to give it a nice finish but we have pretty much achieved uh, the brew stand I mean apart from just installing these plungers these toggle plungers that is done so what I'm going to do is have a well earned weekend rest certainly tonight I'll be having a drink and then I'll come in and we'll do a closing um, video for this mini series I think there'll be five videos in total then of the brew stand build and then of course we'll move on to the next job which is probably going to be the control panel build while it's fresh in my mind from Tom's you see I'll be able to get straight on with it uh, here and I also want to mount it on the brew stand so I'm thinking next to the HLT bit of an upright swing out TV bracket what do you think I reckon it's a good idea anyway think about it over the weekend folks and then we'll make a decision when we come back we'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>